Hi, sorry. Wow, this is a good crowd. I'm glad to see this. Um, so this is the Cinder project update. Um, and uh, hey. sorry for the late start. My laptop while I was trying to prepare during the keynote just hung. But we're working now, um, so we'll move on. Um, just for if anybody's new, how many people are familiar with Cinder? Hey, everybody. It still works the same way. It's your traditional uh, client with a API and scheduler and volume services. So I'll skip over this and get to the good stuff. Um, project background for, for anybody who's not familiar with this already. Um, it started uh, back in the Folsom release when it was pulled out of Nova and um, you know, has 158 contributors in Rocky. So we continue to be a, a good healthy project. Um, had a good representation at the PTG in Denver, as you can see from the, the picture here. Uh, you know, the usual suspects there, and we continue to have uh, in the user surveys reported that a, a significant number of our users are using Cinder uh, both in production and in test. So, um, what we're going to do today is the usual update. I'll go through what we've added in Rocky. Uh, share some of the news there, and then talk about what we're planning to do in Stein, and hopefully have a few minutes for questions at the end here. So, Rocky, we had some new drivers come in, um, as we always do. Um, you know, if, if for those of you who've been with Cinder since the early days, there used to be a flood. Now it's kind of down to a, a more manageable trickle, which is a good thing. Um, we had Nexenta Edge. Uh, iSCSI storage, the Veritas Access iSCSI driver, and our Inspur in-storage um, fiber channel driver. For those of you that are excited about NVMe, uh, there was a target added to that for LVM. Um, so we're starting to see more L uh, NVMe support work its way in. Um, OK, come on. There we go. Um, we've had, we've been kind of working through the process of making sure that third-party CI requirements are being met um, by our drivers, and with that, you know, ones that fail to report on it, like at least half the patches over, you know, a three-month period of time, um, we've been deprecating those, and so with that happening, um, we had to mark the these four drivers unsupported. Um, for those of you that don't have experience with this, it doesn't mean it's removed, but uh, users have to agree in the config file that they are aware that they're dri running an unsupported driver. So um, just for awareness, these are some of the ones that have been removed and or, or marked unsupported during Rocky. Multi-attach, multi-attach, multi-attach. Talk about it every time I'm up here. Um, wanted to give an update with the usual reminder that we have multi-attach, but it doesn't mean you can use it on any backend or any file system. You can hurt yourself if you're not using a file system that supports being attached to multiple operating systems at once. But with that said, it's there. Nine new drivers added support in Rocky. Um, so if you are using one of the backends, uh, they're all in the release notes that supports multi-attach. Um, we will be you can use that. Um, we did have to disable it for the LVM driver um, if you're using LO, LIO and iSCSI and working on getting that fixed. So that was a late discovery in the release. Um, and hopefully we'll have a patch up for that soon to fix that. Scheduler improvements. Uh, this was kind of a, a cool feature we had in, had in Rocky, um, was the ability to uh, control where creations, deletions, et cetera, are scheduled depending on the, the back end and what the operation is. So for instance, let's say I've got an old LVM storage back end that I want to replace with a new shiny storage back end, and I don't want my users to start, be, you know, to still create uh, volumes on that old back end, I can say, I don't want any volume creations to be scheduled on that particular back end. I don't want to disable my users from doing snapshots or other things on it, but I want to start slowly migrating data to that new storage uh, box. And so with these operations, uh, it allows the administrators to better control what functions are uh, able to be scheduled to what back ends. So I thought that was kind of a cool new functionality that came in. Um, have had requests over the years for capacity-based QoS. 
this one in Enraki. Um, so for those of you who aren't familiar with what this means, it basically is when you have, uh, you know, you can specify I've got one gigabyte and I want so many IOPS per gigabyte. So if you create two gigabyte volume, you get two times that number of IOPS and so on. Um, so more of a, a large cloud way, you know, for where you want to, on an individual basis, control QoS um, for larger environments where you have wide variety of volume sizes. Um, replication support, that's another one that, you know, replication, replication, we've been talking about for how many releases. Um, this is a good example of kind of the phase that Cinder is going through. In, we've gone from adding a whole bunch of big shiny new functions to really making sure the functionality we have works. So we've had replication out there for a little bit. People are like, well, great, I can set it up, but I've had a failure. How do I move to using the new storage device now that the failure has happened? You had to go hack the database. Well, that's a great user experience, isn't it? No. Um, so now we've got uh, a command through Cinder Manage that lets you say, hey, uh, I've had a failure, and this back end is now my primary. Move over to that. You start getting your uh, API interacting with that back end instead. You recover your old one. You can go and switch back. And you don't have to hack the database, which, given that we say, please don't hack the database, is a better way to do things. Um, backup support improvements. Everybody's been asking about backup lately. Um, please come to our session later today, I believe, that's the user feedback, because we need to talk about backup a little bit and better understand what's needed, what needs to be improved. But we're working on improving it already in Rocky. Um, so now you can say set an availability zone on a backup. So say I'm backing my data up. I want it to stay in the same zone as my storage. You can specify that. Um, we've also made it more efficient. Thank you, Gorka. <laughs> um, so that you can utilize multiple processes when you're doing a backup to get better processing, better speed, using however, excuse me, CPUs may be available um, on the system where the backup is happening. And uh, improved support for the Google Auth library. Um, I'm not sure how many people are using Google, but that seems like it's worth mentioning. Um, another cool kind of availability zone-based function is being able to say, um, and this goes along with the backups appropriately, but to create uh, volume types that say, what zone do I want my storage to be created in? Um, you know, I know that I'm going to be running on computes in this zone. I want my storage to go to the same zone. You can create volume times, uh, types um, as of microversion 3.52 that go to that same zone. Image signature verification. Security is good. We're adding support for that. Um, so the ability to check a signature in Glance when you create a volume from it and then adding a flag saying signature verified. So if you've got a volume that is created from an image that had a verified signature, it adds that tag and you know that you got the data you wanted um, to your volume for that image. Um, this was a work item that was, wow, we did a lot in Rocky, didn't we? Good job, guys. Um, this was a, a piece of work that was in, in process for a long time. Um, creating, uh, you know, when you transfer a volume to another user, the snapshots didn't go with it. And then that user would say, I'm done with my volume, I want to delete it, and they couldn't because they didn't have access to snapshots, and you have to call up whoever sent you the volume and say, hey, can you get rid of these snapshots so that I can delete my volume? So now we say, hey, you're sending the volume, let's make you the owner of those snapshots as well. Greatly improves the user experience, and then um, you know, if for some reason you want to make the person who you're sending the volume to's life harder, you can still say no snapshots, and you'll own them, and they'll get the volume, and then they'll call you and complain later. So um, by default, this is enabled. <laughs> and uh, again, thank you, Gorka. We're working on active-active um, HA documentation so that people are aware of what's supported with Cinder and active-active HA support. Um, we've got much better documentation out there as to what should work, sh what shouldn't work, and what's recommended. And I'll actually be using this as the segue into our next topic, I think. Almost. First, um, for your reference, here are the microversion changes that went in in uh, Rocky. 
So uh, if you want to use those features, make sure that you set that version um, when you use the command or make sure that you have your environment set up to use the latest micro version. Priorities for Stein. How am I doing on time? I got five minutes. Um, reminder, we talked about these at the Denver PTG. They may or may not happen, um, but it's give you an idea what we're working on and what we hope to get done in the next release. Um, for details, we track in our Etherpad, the uh, Cinder Spec review tracking Etherpad, what we're actually getting done with links to the reviews and that kind of stuff. So, segue, um, what we've discovered from going through the documentation and setting up um, HA development is that the placement service has kind of already solved the issue of how to do this global locking so that we can have multiple active volume instances. So we're hoping during Stein, right Gorka? Yep. <laughs> to um, get this implemented so that we'll have better support for uh, active active volume processes along with active API, uh, active active API and scheduler instances for a good HA environment. Um, big goal for the community is adding upgrade checkers. We're working on that. Um, basically a command that will let you run, uh, that you can run before you upgrade your system from one release to the next. And it says, hey, it looks like your system's ready to go, or you might want to look at this, or hey, you got to fix something before you move on. Um, so we will be implementing that during Stein. Generic backup implementation, I'm hoping that we'll get this in. We've been working on it for a little bit. Um, again, this goes along with the backup goals. Uh, what if you don't have a backup system like TSM or Google or whatever, um, well, how about you use one of your storage backends and back up to that? That's the goal here. Um, I think we're on track to get that done in Stein. I hope, if not, uh, in the train release. How about for train getting named? Woohoo! Um, driver capabilities reporting. We've had challenges here. Um, if you want to know what your driver is doing, it's not the easiest thing to figure out. So this is an area where we're trying to improve the user experience so that people who you know want to go and see I've got three backends, what are each of the capabilities of those backends, uh, hoping to make that more readily available and usable to the administrator. Um, this is up here so that you can hold me accountable because I'm supposed to get this done um, and I need motivation. So it's documented. We're going to try to get to storyboard. My goal in the process is to improve our processes for tracking bugs and specs and stuff so that we can be held more accountable for the work we're doing. I got to do it, so now I've said it. <laughs> Seth iSCSI support. This is another one I'm kind of holding my team accountable for. We've had requests from Ironic and some of the other um, stakeholders here to add iSCSI support. I'll be honest, Lenovo, we're interested in it, so we're working on it. Um, and partnering with Red Hat, people at Red Hat to get that done. But this could be a fun feature, um, you know, being able to use RBD if you want, or if you want to expose your volumes up using iSCSI, it helps really kind of support this idea of having a standalone Cinder environment where you may or may not have RBD access uh, to your volumes. So, and then this also will help enable doing boot from volume with Ceph on bare metal. Um, so, working with Julia to help make that happen too in the ironic environment. Other improvements, um, this is just kind of some of the other stuff we're looking at, um, hopefully getting through, um, reinitializing failed volumes, um, try and get it so that if you don't have volume types, we don't leave you with a bunch of untyped volumes that are not really clear what they are. Uh, deferred deletion in RDB, um, the recycle bin, um, but that, that's a good feature to add with Ceph and improves performance when you're doing deletes. Um, and then we've got people working on all the other things that come around multi-attach and multi-path and stuff, improving that shared targets um, improvement, that kind of stuff, and then adding stuff to the transfer records so that you can better track where has a volume been passed around. Uh, some links here that'll be out in the presentation when I get it posted. Uh, reference for what we're doing, also the release notes. There's a lot more detail in there as to what we've done in, in Rocky. Thank you. And did I do it? Yes, with one minute to spare. Uh, does anybody want to ask a question in one minute? 
I answered all your questions. I covered everything you wanted. <laughs> Good. Well, thank you for coming to the project update. Um, and if you need anything, you know, find us out on OpenStack Cinder uh, in IRC, or you know, post something to the mailing list, and we'll be glad to help you. Other words, happy storage. Go, go forth and save your data. <laughs>